السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. عليكم السلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. أما بعد، welcome and thank you for coming to Friday Night Lights. Today it's just myself and Sheikh Ibrahim and we're going to be talking about gossip, backbiting, and lies. And by lies here, I think we mean slander, right? Yeah. Not just the idea of telling yeah. a lie, but the idea of lies, slander. spreading gas, gossip, and backbiting. And we want to start off with defining each one. Can you give us, Sheikh, a brief definition of each one? Okay, so... <clears throat> Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. Just before, uh, before I start defining each one, uh, or maybe you can share the definition. Okay. Uh, oftentimes we really, sometimes we feel uncomfortable talking about certain topics because uh, they're not something that we want to hear all the time. And, and these topics are important for us to tackle. So talking about back, back, backbiting, I, I think this is probably the most uh, practiced major sin, and I would say most practiced major sin that Muslims get involved in, very and common. actually very common. Yeah. Yes, That's and, true. and they don't pay much attention to it. And as the Prophet وسلم, said when he mentioned when he passed by the grave where there were two graves and he says these the people in these graves are being tortured and they're tortured for something people think is not major but it is major and one of them is actually slander is all i mean uh, causing trouble between people or speaking lies between people or even uh, tale telling or things like this so to the definition uh, backbiting. Uh, the English term is backbiting, but the Arabic term is ghiba. Al ghiba, which means the prophets actually uh, defined it. So when the prophet defines something, there is no need to define it otherwise. So he says, "Dikruka akhaka bima yakra." Dikruka akhaka bima yakra is when you mention your brother, and of course your sister also, uh, with something they don't like to be mentioned, something they don't like being mentioned about them, regardless of whether that something is, is, is true or not. So one of the companions said, oh, Messenger of Allah, what if I, what I said about him is true? He said, that is backbiting, that is ghiba. And if it is not true, that is buhtan, which is slander. So buhtan is slander, is when you mention something about someone that is completely unfounded, false. Yeah. Ghiba is mentioning something about someone he doesn't like, even though it might be true, but he doesn't like it. He doesn't like to be known or that thing mm -hmm. to be mentioned about him. You know so, what's interesting, Sheikh, is that that is the, the very definition of ghiba. Like sometimes mm -hmm. people are speaking about someone and then mm -hmm. they're, they're justifying it in their mind by saying, and by the way, what I'm saying is true. I'm not like lying against the person. So as if like because it's factual and true, right. it's not backbiting anymore. But that's the exact yeah. definition of backbiting. If it's true, you're backbiting. If it's false, then you're slandering and lying yeah. against them. Yeah. And another line that people use is, I am willing to say it in front to of them. To their face, right? <laughs> exactly. I can say this to their I'll face. I'll say it to his face. It's still riba because he's not here. So yeah. you're actually, the definition has two parts. It's true about him, three parts actually. It is true, number one. Number two, it is is something you don't, he doesn't like to be said about him. Number three, it's behind his back. So if you meet these, that is riba. Right. Yes. And so exemptions or exclusions from that would be if, uh, obviously it has to be something that mayakra, what he would dislike or not like for you to say behind their back. So sometimes people will see you and they're like, oh, you know, yesterday we were doing riba on you, but we're only saying good things. I, that's not really this definition yeah. of it. You, these are not things that would upset me. That's one. The other, I forgot the other. The point is <laughs> that this is, well, we've got backbiting down now, and you mm -hmm. already mentioned slander as well. Right. So, an namima then. 
Oh, I want to say that uh, the well, the riba, obviously, even in English, they call it backbiting, right? Right. And uh, so I looked up this term, like, where does this term backbiting come from? And basically, it goes to, uh, I don't want to call it a sport, a pastime they used to call bear baiting, where they get a bear, they tie it down, and then they have dogs fight the bear. And, some, uh, and sometimes the bear would come and attack, the, the, no, the dog would attack the bear from the back. And even that was considered, they considered that unsportsmanlike to bite from the back. Mm -hmm. So in its origin, it's unsportsmanlike to, to do something from the back. And now the idea is that you're going to speak about someone behind their back or when they're, when they're not present. And that's why riba, you can catch the ghayb in it, just like the ghayb is the unseen. The riba is that it was not known to you, it was behind your back, you did not witness it. So it happened when you were not there, mm -hmm. linguistically at least. All yeah. right, now we've got Namima. Okay, Namima is, um, and it's, it's more dangerous than Ghiba, actually. It's more dangerous, and that is the, the Namima that that person was being tortured in his grave for, uh, which is when it, it involves three people. One person was supposed to have said something another, about another person, and the third person is the one who comes and tells that third person, that other person, about what has been said about him. Example, uh, uh, you know, Ahmed, I heard Ali say this about you, and it is bad. If it is something good, that's encouraged. It's encouraged to tell someone what another person said good about them. Like, oh, I heard this person praise you or speak highly of you. That is good. That is making good, peaceful connections between people. Absolutely. But the opposite is when you say, I heard this person say this about you, which means it is something that is abhorrent or something uh, that is not good and you cause trouble between them. So that is Namima. It's like okay. uh, spreading the bad news between people. Yeah. All right, so now we've got the basic definitions, but there is a bigger picture why all these things are forbidden or major sins. And you started saying something earlier about um, that everyone has this right to their reputation to being to be protected, to not be maligned, attacked. Yeah. It's actually this is the basic thing. I mean, that is the uh, you know there are two two points here. One is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala honored human beings. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. They are honored. So by virtue of being human beings, that is their birthright to be honored. It's the default. Yes, it's by default, yes. This is the, so, and, and for a Muslim, it's even more. For a Muslim. The, a Muslim is inviolable, meaning that his reputation should not be violated. His honor should not be violated. Uh, something about him, what makes him, his dignity, his integrity, should not be violated. So this is important. Anything that hurts that, should be actually stopped, and not and people should not be uh, doing any of that. And it doesn't matter what that person is; it could be a, a bad person in a way, or someone who you know who does things that, but he's not really spreading this uh, his evil. Let's say he is still has the right to the honor, as the Prophet ﷺ says, "Al-Muslim uh, al-Muslim." That a Muslim is a brother of a Muslim. He should not belittle him, he should not give him up, and he should not, uh, let's say, betray him. So in a way, if you backbite your Muslim brother, you're betraying him, you're betraying his honor. You're actually violating uh, his very honor, and this is important. So that's number one. Number two is to keep the peace in the Muslim community, to keep that peace where people are um, kept, preserved, and their honor is preserved, and at the same time, there are no troubles between them. And, and there are so many ahadith that talks about not uh, to cause trouble between the Muslims. And islahu that al bayn that to, to cause peace between them is a very high graded uh, action. Whereas the opposite, to create trouble between them, the Prophet called it al-haliqa. 
Al-Haliqa, which is the shaver. It shaves. He says, it doesn't shave the hair. It shaves the religion. He called it that this shaves the religion. So all these practices that lead to causing trouble between different factions of the Muslim community will actually cause the, the, the shaving of the religion, will cause the undermining of the religion mm. of the whole Muslim community. I, yeah. I actually really like that point. And it's something that everyone needs to understand that how Islam gave so much weight to your reputation and to protecting your reputation. You have more right to your image slash reputation than, than someone else. Even in photography, this comes in where there is this, ba this, this understanding that if I have a camera, I have the right to capture your image. And, and people don't know the etiquette of, uh, or the rules and guidelines for photography. So someone will just come up to your face, just take a picture of you. Right. So I have more of a right to my image than you have a right to capture my image. You, you actually are supposed to ask, can I take your picture? May I take your picture? Right. But now, because every phone has a camera on it, cameras are everywhere, nobody understands that there are some rules in Islam for taking photos of, of people. So one sheikh was saying, he, was, he said, I was on the airplane, you know, and he's, he's not in sheikh mode, you know. <laughs> he's not giving a lecture and quoting ayat and ahadith. He's just in, on the airplane. He says, my children were misbehaving. I'm trying to put the luggage up, and this kid was jumping up. and said, sit down. And he puts his, I told you to listen. So suddenly I turn, and there's a lady with her phone and her video on me. I caught sheikh so-and-so with his children. But maybe I don't want to be in that position, you know, and people just come up to you, take your picture, in, right. in a, like paparazzi. Isn't yeah, it? like the paparazzi, like the paparazzi in a Muslim <laughs> state, that would not fly very well. Right. Like this guy's just outside of your house and just taking pictures of your, your face as you're walking and you tell him, get out of here. And they're like, no, I have a right to capture your image. No, I have more of a right to, to my image. One of the interesting things, Shah, um, we always look at when the punishment for, for zina, it, the conditions to prove zina in court are impossible to meet. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, said, from the time of the Prophet until his time, there's never been one case of zina that was proved in court through the, the four witnesses. witnesses. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the conditions are impossible. All right, but zina is bad. It damages the community. It's good to get rid of it. It's good to, to punish those who do it so we can deter other people from doing it. So why did Allah make it impossible to meet? And the scholars say that as much as zina is dangerous, we want to get rid of it. Allah made your reputation at a higher place, so He made it hard for anyone to ruin your reputation. So that's a really big deal. All right, how about just the, the idea of staying out of people's business? I mean, slander, gossip, backbiting, that's someone who just wants to be in someone's business. As, uh, as they say, <laughs> he said, every time I look in my business, I, I find your nose there. Like, I'm sorry, here you go. <laughs> your nose is always in my business. But, there, we have a hadith yeah, on is, that. Yeah, the, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, That part of being a good Muslim is to leave alone what doesn't concern you. Like, mind your business. Don't mind other people's business, honestly. And I, I find it what, you know, if you try to understand backbiting, for example, and backbiting is an easy one. It's a major sin, but it's easier than all the other ones. Is that... The one who does backbiting, actually, there are, there are a few things that happens to this person. One, he gets a kick out of it. A big time. They, yeah, big they, time. they get happy. I mean, why, why do you get happy because you mentioned someone with something bad that they did? Why, I mean, if, if, if it should be, you should actually not expose them. You should cover them. If you cover your Muslim's defect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover your defects in the Day of Judgment. If you think about it, then why are you happy that, oh, I discovered something about so-and-so, and I'm going to tell about it? And, and so that's number one. Number two, I think there's a, a, a psychological problem with this person, and that is they have such a low self-esteem that they want to find somehow to raise their self-esteem by putting all other people's self-esteem down. Okay, you find, okay, who is your, your, your opponent? Let's say you have an opponent 
or a rival in Someone the community. Compete with the arrival. Okay, or this is the this is your equal, uh, but he seems to be happy. Uh, he has better self-esteem than you. So I'm going to say something about him so I can improve my own self-esteem on the expense of this brother's or sister's self-esteem. I think this person should find a way to deal with their own insecurities before they start backbiting people and talking bad about them and uh, you know destroying their dignity. So th I think that is, that's what makes people get involved in other people's business because they have a sorry life, I'm sorry to say that. Yeah. They don't have business of their own, unfortunately. Just you know, mind your business. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, has a really nice comment on another possible reason why someone does things like, or gossips or what have you. He says that the, the person envies the other person. It's like you were saying, the rival or what have you. Right. They envy them so much that they will spread gossip or anything to make them look bad so they look better or whatever reason. So he says then in doing so, you combine two of the, the worst things. You combine right. envy and you get, so you've done envy and you, you've right. you know, committed the gossiping as well. Okay, so I love the idea that you know, tabloid magazines, smearing people's reputation, sometimes even lying against people just for the sake of selling magazines and what have you, all this would, is not acceptable at all and would not be acceptable in a Muslim state, or is not acceptable in the Sharia, yeah. and even though it's prevalent all around us. Um, another thing that's interesting, Sheikh, is that the, the etiquette between the believers is that by default everything is a secret. If you look at the rules of visitation, right. when you visit someone in their house, Everything you see in their home is actually a secret. Anything they tell you, not a secret, but it's supposed it's to be private. kept it's private. Aywa, yeah. in, in confidentiality. Yani. Right. So you go to someone's house and even... With sanctity. There's supposed easily. to be some type of sanctity to your Muslim brother's life and, 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 and persona and, and home and house. And, and lowering and your gaze in their home. And family. Lower your gaze on your... Even when you, when you knock at someone's door, in order for you not to get information. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat, He says, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا Because what makes you gain information about uh, the weakness of someone or a defect of someone or something bad about someone is that you spied you on spied them. You spied in the first place. You see? So, okay, that's your information. You spy on it. Like, okay, and what happens? People go on people's Facebook pages and say, oh, I saw this sister without hijab. How dare she do that? I mean, why would you go to her Facebook account or, or to, to check on that in the first place? So the idea is... Um, what, what? They're haram policing, Yashif. They're the haram police, as they call. Yeah, I mean, there should be some type of sanctity that you don't look for these things. So that's why when you knock on someone's door, you know... The, the etiquette is to put your back to the door. Don't just knock on one door and, and you're just standing there looking to see who's going to open the door. Not no, only just look the, the door. Back so you won't see. You don't know who's going to open the door. I would just do this. Just it's sanctity and respect. Standing with brothers, just open your wallet, kid. And it's like you're standing in a circle just having a talk like outside in the parking lot. Just open your wallet and automatically everyone goes like this. <laughs> One time I was, this guy came to my house, and I'm looking for something. And every time I would open a drawer, he goes like this. <laughs> or open the trunk of your car, and everyone's like, oh, he plays basketball, I buy C cleats, he plays soccer, croquet, or whatever that thing is. Why are you looking in this trunk? Why? Ghadd yeah, al-Basar, lowering the gaze, is just an etiquette. It's not a, like there's going to be a dead body in his trunk. But just why are you looking in his trunk? I opened my bag one time, and this guy just goes like this. Here, your nose, here it is. I'll give it back to you. So I love that. I, I, and whatever wow. someone tells you also, it's supposed to be kept confidential. I was saying earlier, Sheikh, like I wish, you know, the idea of uh, like uh, uh, with lawyers, you know, the, 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 the lawyer and the, the client there, that confidentiality. And they will stick to that so much. That same guy, invite him for dinner and he'll start gossiping, backbiting, whatever. Why were you so disciplined when it came to this that you were taught in law school? But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, not even this, nowhere near the same level of discipline. Or youth, 
I was uh, telling Sheikh Ibrahim earlier about these youth, and this kid is 11 years old, and his parents caught him on something like, who else was involved? And the kid goes, I ain't no snitch. I'm not gonna snitch. I refuse to snitch on anybody. Type this concept of snitch, where do you got it? Where do you get it from? Snoop Doggy Kelby. Who, who gave you this concept of snitch and made it so big in your mind that you won't violate the snitch rule, but you violate all the other, uh, you know, Islamic rules. Islamic yeah. rules, just a khalas, but and, this and one, I won't of, snitch. Rules of morality and, and common sense. Yeah. All right. Right. And people always say that snitches get stitches. Like, that's in jail. Who's going to stitch you up? You're in sixth grade, for God's sake. Who's going to come and shank you in the min in during, during recess? <laughs> Got shanked and stuff. <laughs> Anyways. Nabi um, said, uh, Someone who, and I think we mentioned this, right? The, the person is spreading these stories, but with evil intent, right? He's not just right. telling you the story. Yeah. You know, the problem is, I think, uh, there are people, and I, I know there are people who are prolific gossipers. That's their work. They do that. Uh, and even in the Muslim community, there are individuals who just gossip continuously. And if they don't gossip, they probably have withdrawal symptoms. So it's, it's, it's there. They're addicted to it. And I think the problem is that we are giving them an audience. We let them do that, and we listen to them. Okay. And for you, actually, and I know most of you don't gossip, don't backbite, but what I think a lot of us are guilty of is we, uh, we give them an ear. We hear them out. We let them speak. And you, what you have done, actually, you did two problems here. Number one is that you're a witness to a major sin and did not say anything, so you violated in joining the good and forbidding the evil, number one. Number two, you actually betrayed your Muslim brother who has been gossiped about. Yeah. You betrayed him. A lot of the sisters uh, who listen to that stuff and they allow it to happen actually are complicit in that. And they're carrying these two sins. One, not in joining the good and forbidding the evil. And number two, is that they're betraying the right of another sister or another brother who should not be violated. And the problem is, when I, when, when, for example, when it happens in front of me, I say, brother, this is backbiting. Can you please stop? I don't want to hear anymore. And they become so belligerent. It's like, it's like how dare you say that? And they, I said, hey, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to or I'm just leaving. So you do that because you don't want to give them an audience. And it's important to, that we get into in a, in a culture where we stop these habits. Help them by changing their habits. Help them by finding a different way to get that uh, approval rather than get approval because they're gossiping. So this is a, a very important part sure, that what, we need to pay attention to. What you said about the uh, addiction thing, like they get a, a rush, they get a high from it. So I just heard this crazy story. The sheikh said, and, and this sheikh is a famous uh, mughassil. He washes the, the deceased, yani. famous. He has a lot of crazy stories, insane stories. He said, uh, a woman who washes uh, you know, bodies, she called me up and she said, sheikh, uh, you know, I need your help with an issue. She said, they brought this woman to me and her daughters all walked in the room with me and we're supposed to put her from whatever she's on, the stretcher or whatever, to the other one where we're going to wash her. And she says, we're like seven or eight people, and we can't lift her off. And she's not huge, yani, she's not even big, she's just a regular sized lady. We, eight of us can't lift her. He's like, he tells her, eight people can move a car. How can you not lift her? Just do it. She's like, wallahi, Sheikh, we're trying and it's not working. So then in him, long story short, he gives her the system to put ropes here, here and there, and then they were able to move her on. She said, every time I come to wash her, like I lift her hand and then uh, her hand falls and she grips the sides of the, she grips. She said, Sheikh, call the Red Cross, whatever it is, call doctors, because this lady is alive. The doctor, he's like, come on, how is she alive? She's like, she's alive because she does this. Every time I lift the hand, it grabs like she doesn't want to be washed. 
So in Muhim, she sa he said the doctors came and they're like, what's the matter with you? She's, uh, she's dead. خلاص. She said, I'm not going to wash a living person. She refused. The lady who's been washing for years and an older lady, she said, I'm not going to wash a living person. Al Muhim, her, the daughter said, okay, you just sit there and tell us what to do and we'll wash her. So they said, they washed her. And again, she's super heavy. Like at times we had to stand on top of her just to, to twist her a little bit. And it's just normal, not normal heaviness. Al Muhim, finally, they asked her, the sheikh and the other lady, both of them who wash, they asked the, the daughter. They said, tell us what your mother used to do. She said, I don't want to talk. They told her that a lot of people benefit from the story and the reminder and what have you. She said, but I will hold you accountable in front of Allah if you even hint to her name, where she was buried, anything that indicates that this was my mother. They made a deal. She said, my mother used to fast and she used to pray and she used to do this small thing. In all her life, she had one small thing. If it's a small thing, it caused her to be, like to weigh a ton here. So she said, she would backbite. She would backbite. And she was addicted to it. She said, she would go to a party and just backbite, 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 and get this person, I hate that person, get this fight to happen. And she would come home from the party and she would, uh, what's zagrat in English? <laughs> there is no, there is no, she'd just come and, wul, 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 you know, She's so happy. And then she says, she, it got to the point where she would create problems between me and my sisters. That's how much she was addicted. And she would say, look, she got this brand new one and you don't have a new one. But you're the mother. <laughs> and she would get the girls to fight. And, that, and there are other stories as well, so to the time of washing, where there's some kind of difficulty and the person was incredibly addicted was the word. Like they get mm. a rush from creating problems, from backbiting, from spreading tales amongst people. So, yeah, it is a, an addiction. Yeah. It's a huge problem yeah, yeah. for some people. Tabar. All right, Sheikhna, um, hey, let me ask you something. How about, um, because sometimes people come to you under the guise of, I'm here just, يعني, النصحين, I'm just giving you advice here. I'm just helping you so you don't fall into this. So people will come to you and tell you, like you just gave assistance to this person. But I know this family well, they don't need any assistance, they're wealthy. Or you're doing this for that person, that person does this, this, this and that. Is that acceptable? They're just warning you of, you know. Well, they're not really warning you here. What do you well, think? Well, again, it's... Uh, I mean, what's, what's the motive? Why would you want to come to uh, a, uh, someone who helps people, you know, distribute zakat, for example? I'm looking out for you. And so they come give and say, hey, someone more by worthy. the way, he just gave zakat to this person. He doesn't, he, he, he has money. Or they go to a, the other masjid and get some money. They'll go to the, so I tell them, uh, you know, I just say, can you just leave them alone? These people are needy. Thank you very much. You go on. But the fact that you come in and telling about this family that they don't need because they go, to other sources is none of your business. We did our due diligence. We investigated as much. We don't need to even investigate. You could actually tell if the person is poor. And if you lost five, six hundred dollars, gave it to a person who probably makes three hundred dollars, three thousand dollars a month, what's the big deal? Still, the person is poor, with $3,000 a month, still poor. Why would you want to come and talk about someone? And so that is, yes, that is backbiting. You're not trying to protect the Muslims' community's money. That is backbiting. Right, so there's no, the fact so, that they go to more than one masjid is probably proof that they're poor. Exactly. I mean, who wants to, who, who wants to do that? Who enjoys going to, from one masjid to another to, to make uh, ends meet? I understand there are other programs. That's a different topic. But the fact that people go and get in other people's business and tell you, oh, you shouldn't uh, help this family because I've seen them get money from another source, it's not of your business. So honestly, um, this is not something that should be uh, you know, said or even people get involved in uh, because it's either backbiting or actually betraying someone's, you know, private 
uh, life that they have. Or, you know, it's not really acceptable. Now, you can warn about someone who's really doing something evil in the community that is really like causing harm. Yeah, that is one way of making this allowed, where it's not backbiting now, it's just warning. Allah does not like people to speak about evil, except if there is oppression there that needs to be addressed. So in that case, that's different. So that means there, there needs to also be res like a responsibility on, on our side as well, like someone's going to talk about us or something. But how careful do you have to be? Or how aware of this do you have to be? I mean, you mentioned the story of the Prophet ﷺ talking to his wife, Safiya. Can right. you tell us that story? Yeah, well, the, uh, it, this is actually, it shows where it, it goes into the part of, let's say, slander or, or gossiping about a situation that you, you've seen. Uh, a lot of people see, for example, a Muslim brother uh, with a woman that they don't recognize, for example. And they just go say, oh, I saw this brother uh, sitting with a woman. Uh, why would you say that? Uh, what situation do you know? This is something that really should not be getting involved in. Uh, they, the proof is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi it was a little dark. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was talking to his wife, Safiya. And two uh, companions came and we saw the, they saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi with the woman. She was in hijab and uh, could not recognize her. They ran away. They walked a little faster, yeah, right? Yeah, they walked faster. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi called them back. And he said, this is my wife, Safiya, or this is Safiya. So they'll know that this is his wife. Why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did that? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did that because he he knows what could happen. And he actually followed it by saying, Inna shaytana layajri min ibn adam majraddam. That shaytan will uh, flow through you and whisper into you and, and incite, entice you like the blood flows in, in your veins. So in order to protect them from being exposed to the, the extreme, most dangerous sin, which is gossiping against the Prophet Sallallahu or about the Prophet ﷺ, which will happen if this was not dealt with from the beginning. So the Prophet ﷺ, out of his mercy for them, he told them not to. And because we know that these things can happen. People talk about other people. And we learn from this is that do not, it's not of your business if a brother was seen with a woman. It's not of your business. It's none of anybody's business if a brother sees. Maybe it's his wife. It could escalate uh, severely, I should. Yes, because it could That's be. Right. It there could be a good explanation. I'll tell you a story. There's that always to a me. good explanation. There's always a better explanation yes. than the outcome of the backbiting, than the outcome of the gossip. Honestly, you could destroy a family with their, when there's nothing there. I remember one time, you know, at the university, we always had these English professors. They get lazy. They just tell you group project. So we were meeting in this general area in, uh, you know, it's like a, just seating areas, kid, but people walking by and stuff. And I was the chaplain, the Muslim chaplain for the university. Mm -hmm. And so our group is meeting and it's like one girl and like th three, besides me, three other guys. So we're gonna meet at this area. So the girl comes early, I come early. So she's sitting farther, sitting farther, we're just waiting for everyone else. We're not talking or anything. <laughs> one of the Muslim brothers walks by. And he goes, Salaamu Alaikum. And then he does a double take. <laughs> I told him, group project, we're waiting for three other guys. And I thought, you know, Afkar and stuff. Yeah, of course. So yeah, you could see a guy, maybe it's a business meeting, all right? With his secret, I mean his boss or something, all right? It's nobody's business. <laughs> it's nobody's business. La, Muslim, I'm khair, fa'alat khair. Let me tell her, let me warn her. But maybe you're warning her there's nothing happening. Now you're going to destroy a family and she's going to go through her phone and really discover his secret wife. <laughs> All right, you can tell that I'm joking on some of those parts. But, but okay, let's put it this way, Sheikh. Let's get it into the real stuff. Okay, she sees him with his secret wife. Ah, huh. straight up secret wife. And he looks at her like this when he sees because she knows she's his other wife's Listen. friend. Is, she, is it her I'm, job I'm, to tell no, her? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what is worse. Huh. If she sees him commit an affair, she can't tell about it. 
Islamically, you can. You heard it because here. Because you folks. have to have four witnesses in order for you to make that claim. It is so dangerous. If you see someone committing or having an affair, you cannot tell anybody about it. If you see him committing the act of zina itself, yes. it is, you're supposed to uh, keep that's it That's what to I yourself. meant. I mean, yeah. I'm being, you know, we have youngsters yeah. who know more than me, probably. <laughs> so in that case, you're not supposed to tell? You're not. So how about if she is his wife? Mm. It doesn't matter, really, honestly. It's none of anybody's business because the outcome of the gossip is always worse. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Haliqa. Al-Haliqa means the shaver. It shaves, he says it doesn't shave the hair. It shaves the religion. The result could be that maybe the first wife will leave Islam completely. Shocked. Whatever the outcome will always be worse and she doesn't than benefit. the actual, than the, I mean, nobody is condoning zina. I don't condone secret wives either, but at the same time, it's none of anybody's business to talk about someone who are, Aywa. you know, it's, Muhammad, it's really that? important. Tfaddal. Yeah, I mean, some people have issues with secret marriages. Sheikh Ibrahim has an issue with that. You know. uh, the condone, I'm, I'm not condoning it. I'm just, we're, we're not talking about secret marriages. We're talking about gossiping and backbiting. So I, I went even worse. I went further than that, which is more, worse than that. Someone who's committing adultery, actually, you cannot, you cannot reveal their sin. You cannot reveal their sin. It's, it, you can't. Yeah, it's then we it's qadif. If you reveal their sin without having four witnesses with you, three other witnesses, if you reveal their sin, their sin, you are liable before Allah for qadif, which is slander that is punishable, and it's like three punishments, not just one punishment. People think it's just lashes. You will never be trusted in a test in a, in a in a testimony ever again until you repent and. And few other things that mm. are so. The, in Islam, actually, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Quran mentioned it in a very, very, uh, you know, serious way, where the 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 family unit and the community has to be protected, the, and the individual's uh, reputation has to be protected. Yes. Yes. Tfadda. There's a no, so we don't want to get too too much into that field. But basically, there is a rule that uh, the judge follows and everyone follows, and it's idra ul hududa bishubuhat. Yeah, and you're trying to push away the the punishment by finding any kind of doubt that's reasonable. So actually, in when in cases of zina and stuff, video evidence, no matter how much high definition, is not uh, acceptable proof because. Video can be doctored, altered. Maybe it was his evil, evil twin brother who did it. Uh, it. Maybe it was a body double. The face was his, but later on the, the, the body was someone else. So the judge finds his job, which is really beautiful, and not to change the topic, but the, the philosophy of the judge in a Muslim court is that he works as your lawyer. He's trying to find doubt to cast on the evidence to set you free. The Sharia doesn't want your blood. There's no quota. We need to get this many people punished or what have you. Um, but going back to our topic, Sheikh, you know what's interesting in the story of the ifk, the accusation against Aisha radiallahu anha. And there's a part that's so curious where uh, Sufyan ibn Ma'attal al-Sulami, he comes and he finds Aisha radiallahu anha alone in the desert. Safwan. Safwan, yeah. I said Sufyan. Yeah. Safwan ibn Ma'attal al-Sulami, jazakallah khair. He comes and he finds in the morning, finds uh, the figure of a sleeping person. When he gets close, he recognizes that it's Aisha because he saw her before the verse of hijab. So then Aisha says, he istarja, he said, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That's what you say when there's a calamity. Then she says, so she covered her face immediately, and then she swears by Allah, 
that he never said another word to her until we reached the, uh, the army or right. caught up with the army. Yes. So then, and I only found one scholar who made this really nice comment. He said, why wouldn't he say anything else? Yani, would it be inappropriate if he said, what happened? How'd you end up here? Like, how do you just find the wife of the Prophet sleeping on the ground in the <clears throat> desert by herself? He, what happened? Okay, are you ready? I'll have the camel rise now. You, are you firm? Are you holding the thing? He could have said anything and it would have been completely innocent. But he never said a word. He said, I found that peculiar that he never said a word. He said, Aisha was about 13 at the time. And Safwan, radiallahu anhu, was a grown man. And in his mind, he knew that this didn't look good. The visual wasn't good. So he didn't say a word so nobody could. Look how careful. So you also kind of have some responsibility in being careful. And so if I'm sitting... Uh, I don't know what the scenario would be, but if I'm sitting alone with a woman and someone from the, the clique community walks by, I'll, I'll tell them exactly what's going on. You know, Habibi, job interview. Habibi, her husband went to the bathroom. What do you do with a inspector? You know, and because we got some sisters here, they're ready. They're ready. There's a sister with a clipboard of all the men who have secret marriages, and she... And she goes to sisters and like so and so, so and so got married on July Fourth, and this guy got married at this hour, and and then she tells all these other sisters, and then they become taban now woke culture, mashallah, everybody's a hero, everyone's looking out for the rights of others, and then one sister got that list, and she's like, I I have it in my mind to go to each one of these sisters and tell them, I just want to destroy families. Why is it your business? So go and tell each sister there's a, there's a, your husband has a secret. Inshallah, yours has one also. <laughs> Just so that you know how it feels. I'm partly kidding, partly. All right. <laughs> now, I, I really want to uh, point out something, and, and that's uh, backbiting sometimes is not just by words. You could actually be m mimicking somebody, or, or uh, it's called muhaka. So Aisha radiallahu anha mentioned, she said, uh, I mimicked someone and I wish if it for the whole world that was given to me, I wish I never did it. She said, I only said about Safiya, but just pointing with her hand to show that she was short. And the Prophet sallallahu said, لَقَدْ خُلْتِي now, this is important to understand. Let's dig deep a little bit in this. He said, you have said a word, even though she didn't say it, she actually mimicked it. But what was understood is qasira. So that's a word. If, I mean, we express words by either our tongues, by language, or by... Uh, Sign language. Yeah. I could say, I love you. I don't know how. Doing this, right? Is that, whatever. Like this? Yes. Okay, I just said I love you, right? That's an expression. Um, so what she said, she did this, meaning qasira. So he said, you said a word that if it were to mix with the water of the sea, it would have mixed it completely and it would have ruined it. It shows it. Okay, what I'm saying here is, first of all, backbiting can be by mimicking or by signaling. Number two is that backbiting is so dangerous, it can cover all of your good traits. You could be an honorable, and I honestly, this is something that even natural. I would be having so much respect for a person until he starts backbiting, and he falls completely off my, like the sakata min aini. His, his dignity, to me, it would be just, that's it with him. Like, disrespect. He lost respect. Even though he may or she may have all that uh, great traits, but backbiting actually ruins that for you. Ruins it. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ meant by saying, لو مجزت بماء البحر لما زجت means it will cover all of your good deeds as if you don't have any. Yes. Not working? Allahu <laughs> 
ਅਕਬਰ ਅੱਲਾਹੁ ਅਕਬਰ ਅੱਲਾਹੁ ਅਕਬਰ ਅੱਲਾਹੁ ਅਕਬਰ ਅਸ਼ਹਦੁ ਅੱਲਾ ਇਲਾਹਾ ਇਲਲਾਹ ਅਸ਼ਹਦੁ ਅੱਲਾ ਇਲਾਹਾ ਇਲਲਾਹ ਅਸ਼ਹਦੁ ਅੰਨਾ ਮੁਹੰਮਦਰ ਰਸੂਲੁੱਲਾਹ ਅਸ਼ਹਦੁ ਅੰਨਾ ਮੁਹੰਮਦਰ ਰਸੂਲੁੱਲਾਹ ਹਈ ਅਲਸ ਸਲਾਹ ਹਈ ਅਲਸ ਸਲਾਹ ਹਈ ਅਲਲ What's interesting Sheikh is that you know we we grow up here or we live here in America and in America you are free to say what you want but don't touch anybody and you will get in trouble if you touch someone like even if you put a finger on someone like that that's physical assault they can call the police on you and you assaulted that person even if they didn't get hurt you shove them you put your hands on them don't touch anybody but you can say anything you want about their mother, their father, their grand. You can't call 911 because someone insulted your mother. You know, you can't just call 911. What's your emergency? Uh, this guy, uh, I, I did cut him off, but he said something about my mother, and I want him arrested right now. Their operator will tell you what to go to say to his mother. All right? But if he touched you, oh, they'll send the cops, especially if you're white. But th that's not the point. The <laughs> Everybody's too serious today. The point is, <laughs> the point is, it's not funny, by the way. It's not that funny. guy thought it was funny because he's black. But, <laughs> but the point is, we, we take it easy when it comes to, so that's why we relax. We don't touch anyone, but we use whatever words, gossip. Now, what I'm trying to tell you, really, what I'm trying to say is that in Islam, sometimes the what comes out of the tongue is worse than the hand. And this is a true story that happened a long time ago. No, not that long, but like in Sudan, like something like close to 100 years ago or something. This, this kind of respectful man, a very respectful individual known in the community, and some hoodlum riffraff guy slapped him in the face in front of everybody. So he was really offended, and he took him to court. And the judge said, now the judge here, if you physically hit someone, the judge might say, hit him back the same way, equally as hard, not harder or softer. Or he might make him pay a fine. Whereas if he slanders a chaste woman, he will give him 80 lashes. Like he'll be punished could, severely, like just for saying it. something. Yeah. So I went to finish that story. He took him to court and the judge was kind of lenient. He said, okay, the just pay him $5. The guy was really offended, like, this guy slapped me in front of the whole community, just pays $5. So when they went outside of the courtroom, the guy gave him 10. So the guy just slapped him back. Pah! He said, I don't have any change. <laughs> you know? But the point is that, the <laughs> true story, Chef. The tongue is dangerous and sometimes regarded far more serious than just touching someone. Whereas in America, you touch someone, that's it, but you can say whatever you want. And then we, do, we kind of adopt that and we don't see 
something serious about talking and gossiping and talking about people and, and following and going back to their history on Facebook and, you know. <laughs> and actually part of it is a word is, is more injurious than, uh, than an assault. The words are destroyed. And, 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 and a word can mean contempt, can mean that you hate the person. Words can show that you really hurt the person hate him, you have contempt towards him, but if, if, if somebody bothers you, you get angry with them and you punch them, yes, it's bad, it hurts, but you really probably don't hate him or you don't have any contempt towards him, right? It's much easier, whereas a word can have a really lasting effect, a horrible lasting yeah, effect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so we, we need to discuss before our time runs out. Fadal Ustad. You want to use the microphone? Uh, it says it's very sick. Uh, mush it says Haytham wants to share a story about it. Huh? Naam? I, I was at Olive Garden a few years ago Aywa. with one of the sheikhs, very well known in Houston. Hmm. So, subhanAllah, we're sitting there. This for is before lunch. five years ago? Yes. So, I moved here five years and ago. That's so it doesn't you. So. Five, okay, great. <laughs> so, we're sitting there, we meet him for lunch, we're going to talk about something. So the lady came, and you know, at Olive Garden, I don't know, they still do the same thing. When you sit down, she offer you wine. So she brought the bottle of wine with two cups to ask us. And then there was a table next to us with big group. So she put the bottle with two, with two cups and our table, and she left. And two or three minutes, because she went to help other people. So me and that sheikh were talking, say, subhanAllah. If anybody from the community now watching us, they say, mashaAllah, we have Olive Garden drinking. In the middle of the day. Yes. So that's how I don't You don't got judge three me. situations there, yeah. right? There's yeah. a group that's going to say, look at these people. There's another group that will pull out the phone, take that picture that we spoke about. <laughs> then there's a third group that's going to be happy and say, Sheikh is drinking, it's halal, alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all are problematic, huh? Zakir <laughs> Lakhair for sharing that story. Okay, so you, you backbite someone. What, what do you do? How do you, how do you correct it? What's the expiation? We've got a couple of scenarios. We've got a scenario where you were you know, with a group of four people and you're speaking about brother so-and-so who's not here. And he never knew or found out that you said all this stuff behind his back. So in this case, how do you expiate? How do you repent? How do you correct your mistake? So the scholars say in this case, and he never received this information. One thing you do is you ask Allah to forgive him or her, and you keep asking Allah to pardon them and to forgive their sins and to, and you make dua for them for forgiveness to expiate your sin. The other thing is they say also, go back to that gathering or that person that you said all the bad things to and say good things this time about that person. Reverse the bad that you did. It's not just enough to say, okay, may Allah forgive them, but go correct the bad that you, you've said. But in the case of the person received the news and he knows that you said that, what now, Chef? So, I, I mean, it's, first of all, it, it shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive the rights of people until the, the people themselves forgive their rights. Mm. And, and just going back to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu when he said, atadruna min al-muflis, do you know who the, the bankrupt is? He said, al-muflisu minna man la dirhama lahu wa la dinar. Qal, al-muflisu man ya'ti yawm al-qiyamati. He says the bankrupt is a person who comes on the day of judgment with great deeds like fasting, praying, hajj, and, and zakah. And, and, and then he comes while he has, you know, backbit this person, slandered this person, hit this person. And this person will come and take from his hasanat. That person will come and take from his hasanat until when there are no more, no more good deeds that he has on his record that their bad deeds will be thrown in him and he will be thrown in the hellfire. That is actually the bankrupt. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive the rights of the people until the people themselves forgive that, their, their rights. Now if the person got to know that you back bit him, now if, uh, and you're the person that back bit him, you should go and ask for forgiveness. You should go and ask him From to the person. forgive you. Yes, you go to the person and ask his forgiveness. Now, even if he doesn't know, even if he doesn't know, 
the best way is to go and ask for forgiveness anyway, but it could be that you could hurt them more when they knew that you were talking about them. Yes. If that is the case, then you do what Sheikh Kemal, you go back to, that's the algorithm, go back to mm -hmm. uh, option, option one. It's, it's like the so, chart. But, but if you, if, uh, but if he already knew or you know that the person will not get hurt and he will be forgiven and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him to forgive you because you're only doing this because you have repented truly, then you go and ask and Allah will guide him to forgive you because eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, if you have repented and you showed, you know, good uh, will and, and, and a true repentance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reconcile between you right before you enter Jannah. That will happen. So he will forgive you, inshallah. Or if he doesn't, you just keep doing more good deeds because you need to pay that back on the Day of Judgment. So what do you do is do a lot of sadaqat, give more charity, uh, ask Allah to forgive him all the time, and give sadaqah on his behalf too. So I all think right. that would exactly. be... So just to repeat, we were saying that the person doesn't know that you did that. How do you correct that? You said you ask Allah to forgive them. And then you also mention them in good, with good. Then in the case that they know, Sheikh Ibrahim is saying that you, you can go to them and ask them to pardon you and to forgive you for what you said about them. Do you have to go into full details or just roughly I said kind of something? As much as it doesn't hurt them. It doesn't hurt them. Because you don't want to hurt them more. Yes. Basically, I know someone where a person came to apologize to him, said, I said something bad about you. And then he tells them what he said, and it made him more angry. I'm like, well, and why would you say that? But here's another good point. Like when, and I said this in the khutbah earlier, I said when someone comes to you and says, you know, I'm here to ask for your forgiveness. In the past, I said some bad things about you. What, what did you say? Right? You start opening an investigation. Okay, so what did you say? You said that. Why did you say that? And who else was at the gathering? Did they defend me? Then you call them up. Yeah, listen, I, in 1984, you were at a gathering and you didn't defend me. Start an investigation. That's not why they came to you. They came to you to, for forgiveness. Right. They said they're not going to exactly. do it again. <clears throat> so sometimes people get rough with that kind of thing. Right. I, I have a scenario which is very, very uh, uh, practical and it happens all the time. Is that if you, you, you read on the news or a news report talking about uh, someone uh, that they did this or they were doing this and in our standards as Muslims this is haram it's not supposed to be and so you, it's all over the news you as a Muslim you should not circulate that type of information at all whether it is accurate or not accurate it's none of your business even if it's a hundred percent accurate it should stop right there uh, because you don't want to perpetuate the gossip. This is a gossip. You're hurting a Muslim brother. You're hurting a Muslim individual that could really hurt. And you're hurting families because of it. It should stop right there, not, not be circulated. This is, it is completely haram to circulate information like this that will hurt uh, a Muslim family or another Muslim brother or another Muslim sister in any way or shape or form just because it was in the news. You can say, right. oh, I did not backbite them. You did. Why? Because you mentioned them with something they don't like. Thank that you. is basically, oh, uh, well, it's all over the news. Anyone could have gotten it. Well, then it's not on your record. It's on so other people's record. let a specific record. example. Okay, a few months ago. There was this famous, uh, I don't know what if it was settlement or something. It was uh, Johnny Depp who Amber saw, okay? For everybody, w um, Amber heard, saw, heard, Mabtafrik. The point is that the, they were, like everybody was following that. It was uh, funny. It was funny. Is that, is, that some, yani, is that something you should put your nose out of or is it okay I, to follow think, something like that? I think, you know, I'm guilty. Uh, you know, as charged, I watched a few of those uh, Type, I really videos, know. they were very funny, but yeah, you should be out of that. You Who pooped on the bed? <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't care. The po <laughs> we got 10 anyway, minutes. Anyway, Father. But the, the, the idea, I, I want to just mention a hadith before. Prophet Muhammad mentioned, 
Whoever circulates a lie, he is one of the liars. He said, whoever circulates a lie, he is one of the, li one of the liars. So just pay attention to that. So he's involved in a lie, involved in backbiting, involved in gossiping. It should stop right with you. It should stop with you. If you, if you receive something on, on WhatsApp, delete it. Stop it right there. Don't forward. Once you have forwarded that video or that report, you are point. complicit. You are complicit in the gossip. And that person will come on the day of judgment and ask Allah, because Allah will remind everyone with what everyone did. He will come and ask Allah to take their right from you. And on that day, there's, only dinar, there's no dinar on dirham. Because reputation of a person, the honor of a person, does not have a price. Their price is good deeds and bad deeds. Jannah and hellfire. So pay attention to that, brothers and sisters. And I know this has been happening throughout. That doesn't mean we don't have to have uh, serious conversations about our you know, uh, community, uh -huh. but without hurting people's uh, reputation Sorry. at all. So let, let's just take three real quickly for those stuff. And, and so many of them are lies, too. We should do it just a day on sharing. For those the question is, if you're trying to share information about politicians so people do not vote for them, because you have some bad things they're doing, then you have to be careful with that. That's different. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's different. We're talking about an innocent Muslim brother. Yeah, that's different. 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 Yeah, that's different or if someone actually is asking for marriage and you know that there's something dangerous about this brother or he drinks, nobody knows that he drinks. Okay. You should go to the father and say, by the way, I really need to tell you this. This brother drinks or this brother abused his first wife or something like this. Because there's a marriage, there's another situation that will be and that evil will perpetuate. Mm -hmm. You don't want to perpetuate evil. So this is one of the situations where it's allowed. All right, so let me, Ustaz Naji, we'll get to you in a second. Just want to run through. So, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim already mentioned one. These are scenarios where it's not backbiting. We said, if you're bringing a complaint up to a judge, an arbitrator, an imam, someone who can actually help with the situation, mm -hmm. and you're saying so-and-so did this, 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 because you're complaining of mazlam or injustice, it's not backbiting because mm -hmm. you're... Right. But don't go to someone who has no authority to fix it as an excuse that... Oh, no, don't go beyond what is needed. Okay, that was the... So, if you're also seeking someone's help in changing a munkar, you know, someone who, you know, the three close friends and he discovers a problem for one of them, he tells the other guy so they can work together, he's actually sincerely trying to help him get out of that problem, then that's different. And, Sheikh was mentioning the nasiha, you're, someone comes to you for advice. You have to be honest here. You're in, you, it's a trust. So... I want to do business with so-and-so. Do you think it's a good idea? I don't think you should get into business with this person. He looks like a good guy. Okay, I get it. I'll give you an example. He went into business before with this guy and this happened. Yeah, but maybe it was the other guy. So he's not convinced till you give him right. another story. The third story convinced him. Now that he's convinced, your fourth story is backbiting. Exactly. And until right. that point, it was halal for you. But after they're convinced, there's no reason to keep going. Oh no, I have six more, sit. Uh, okay, <laughs> and then um, someone who, and I think also Sheikh mentioned this one, someone who's already public about their sins. He's drinking and posting it on Instagram and Facebook. Khalas is known as that guy. Now, you're not backbiting. Or someone who's a mubtadi, a heretic, and he's spreading some bid'ah mm -hmm. in the community, you can warn of that person. Or if there's a, a scammer or a, or a, marriage a, situation, a con man. man. Yeah, marriage situation for sure, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, con man and you're warning the community of him and things of that sort. Does not.
And the Sheikh was saying, that when the person says, I won't forgive you, what do you do? You just keep asking Allah to forgive you and increase your good deeds and give more charity, more sadaqah, and just to leave it alone. You're making more good deeds, so on the day of judgment, you can pay him back with these good deeds. We've got like three minutes. Uh, one thing I mentioned in the khutbah today, the idea of backbiting non-Muslims. Some people, I used to see a lot of Muslims, like, oh, it's just a non-Muslim. We can backbite them, you know? And you, you can't. I was saying, so you're at your office, and you're standing by whatever the coffee machine or whatever, and you're just backbiting about the manager, about so and so, and what have you. The backbiting is a quality you don't want to have in you as a believer. It doesn't matter if you're doing it about a Muslim or non Muslim. They're non Muslim. You're not going to backbite. They're non Muslim. You're not going to curse or cuss or use profanity to, uh, towards them or lie to them because they're non Muslim because you don't want to have those qualities in you. Then someone came to me after the khutbah and said, What about like uh, Trump? And you talk about bad things that he did. I mean, is that permissible or not, Donald Trump? At this point, no. You're actually, inc you're actually spreading his, uh, his sins. I mean, you're talking about his sins, which you're normalizing his sins, which is another aspect. And the, the most important hadith that we started with is part of you being a good Muslim is to leave alone what doesn't concern you. It's none of your business. You mean at this point because he's not the president anymore? No, yeah. But he'll be back, you guys. Takbir. <laughs> Tak No? No takbir? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're going to stop, Sheikh. It's like two minutes to the Iqama. All right. Yeah. Sisters, any questions? Any comments? Yes, Tadali. Okay. Can you give a sadaqah on behalf of someone who either they don't know or they refuse Whether to forgive? Whether it's on his behalf or her behalf or not, you give sadaqah so you can offset the, uh, that, that sin of the backbiting that sin. or whatever and it, it is. It takes a lot of sadaqah, not just because you don't know what will satisfy the person on the day of judgment. Yes. Yeah. You know what's interesting uh, on the treaty, the day of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, when they wrote the treaty, Umar who didn't like it, the conditions were unfair to the Muslims. And so he just asked the Prophet why are we accepting this? And he has said the same thing to Abu Bakr. Then later on he regretted that he questioned. He didn't say anything haram. He just kept asking the Prophet why are we accepting the terms of this treaty? Then he says, later on as a grown, he said, not as a grown man, but يعني, as the Khalid, mm -hmm. he says, فَعَمِلْتُ لِذَلِكَ عَمَلًا I spent years and I did so many deeds to offset that. Right. It wasn't even a sin or major sin. He just said, why are we accepting these bad terms? But he said, I spent years doing good deeds to make up for that mistake. So, ma balak yani from, exactly. let alone something like right. a major sin like this, like backbiting, you're going to, don't just give out $5 and I think that takes care of it. I keep giving, keep giving so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our shortcomings. Zakum khairan for listening attentively and for uh, participating. Sallallahu alayhi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.